Sure. Hi, I'm uh, Bree Wilkie. I'm a medical oncologist um, that treats sarcomas, and I do sort of both sides of the bench to bedside research. Um, I run clinical trials, but also work in the laboratory um, trying to figure out how to get the immune system to fight sarcomas better. So thanks for including me. Great. And um, just uh, I'll introduce Dr. Clay Smith is he here and then um, Dr. Devella as well. And then um, Dr. Kondak as well. Um, who, who, who wants to start? Do you want to um, take us through? Yeah, no problem. I wasn't sure if we were introducing or not. So um, with that, then I will go ahead and take us through just a very brief introduction. I want to leave lots of time for discussion, um, but basically we're going to touch on immune therapy as well as CAR T cells and other types of cellular therapy for different types of cancer, including solid tumors as well as blood cancers. Next slide. Um, so these are all of us, Dr. Smith, um, Dr. Davila, Next slide. Um, Dr. Kamdar and Dr. Wilkie, myself. So we have two representatives from the blood tumor side and then uh, myself and Dr. Davila um, will represent the solid tumors. Next slide. So um, again, I'm, I sort of focus on solid tumors and I just wanna kind of lay out um, the landscape of what we think about for immune therapy. So if you go back and you think about at the very beginning, if you have a damaged cell in your body, your immune system is programmed to be able to recognize that damage. And generally, if it's doing its job correctly, which it does billions of times per day, it will destroy that damaged cell long before it has the chance to become a tumor. Unfortunately, what happens over time is that your immune system may make mistakes. And sometimes that's because tumor cells or damaged cells have the ability to avoid recognition and attack by the immune system. And so what we try to do in immune therapy is figure out different ways that we can train your immune system or restore that ability of your immune system to actually attack the cancer, recognize it as being bad and take it out. So in solid tumors, there's really um, four different problems that we think about. Um, and there's our treatments kind of are framed around these different issues. Some tumors are actually able to be recognized from the get-go, um, meaning that the immune cells are actually in the tumors and they just need a little bit of help to get over that edge. Um, next, you can hit click. Um, other types of cancers, um, the immune system has never recognized that they're a problem. Um, and so they basically, the immune system has no clue they're foreign or damaged or anything. And we call these cold cancers or basically, tumors where we need to start from scratch. We need to do something to that cell to make it be able to be recognized um, by the immune system. Other um, types of cancer may have particular problems in signaling pathways, um, sometimes faulty blood vessels or particular signaling pathways that really drive the growth and the spread of these tumors. And then finally, there are some cancers, which we'll talk about quite a bit today, that already have a specific target. And that target, or I think of it like a protein antenna, if you will, is already primed to be able to be recognized by the immune system. And so we can kind of bypass the patient's immune system or really give it a very robust supply of immune cells already ready to go and go after a particular target that's expressed in those cancers. And so you'll hear a lot about checkpoint inhibitors. Checkpoint inhibitors are antibodies that really take off the brakes of the immune system and tend to be the most effective in hot cancers that already are there. They just need a little help. We are looking at various combinations, including chemotherapy or targeted therapy that can try to help improve responses. And then we'll talk about cellular therapies in um, when we have targets that we already know are well recognized by the immune system. Next slide. Why is this important? So I'll tell you, you know, Brittany Sullivan was a patient of mine that I treated several years ago and she had a very rare cancer called alveolar soft heart sarcoma. It's basically 100 to 150 cases per year in the United States and it doesn't respond to traditional chemotherapy. 
And so she was able to get onto a clinical trial um, that was an investigator initiated trial supported by industry, but also requiring philanthropy support to get it off the ground. Because again, these are rare diseases and we don't have a lot of dollars to go for these. Because of this trial, um, you can see her with her husband and her daughter when they got on trial on the left, um, she actually went on to get a near complete response of a cancer she would battled since the age of two. And I'm happy to report on the right that she's doing very well and living life um, to the fullest, uh, really a product of success from these critical early phase research studies. Next slide. And so with that, I'll turn it over um, to Dr. Davila, um, who I think is going to talk a little bit about um, some of these T-cell therapies. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wilkie. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Eduardo Davila. Um, so I'm a research, uh, my focus really, fo my research really focuses on kind of the translational aspect of basic research. In other words, developing uh, new forms of therapies in the basic research setting and then pairing with somebody like Dr. Wilkie to be able to translate this into clinical trials for patients. So developing kind of the next generation of therapies. One such therapy that uh, the field is incredibly excited about is uh, cell-based therapy in which immune cells can be taken from the patient, for example, from the tumors of the patient. Uh, these immune cells are then genetically engineered or modified in such a way so that they're very reactive towards the cancer. So under normal circumstances, they don't do their job at destroying the tumor. However, we're able to manipulate them in such a way and then grow them to large numbers that we can reinfuse them into patients where they'll go throughout the body, find the cancer and begin to destroy it. This is known as tumor infiltrating lymphocyte therapy. Um, and we are presently on course to establish what would be the first in human clinical trials developing this therapy uh, to be able to treat different types of cancers, including uh, solid tumors. Um, so this is just one example of such a therapy. Um, we're really excited that support from benefactors, grateful donors, and from the institution itself, we're able to really move forward these novel forms of therapies that otherwise wouldn't be able to be tested. So we're incredibly grateful for the support that we received and for the excitement that we continue to have. And this includes our, our relationships with the Gates Biomanufacturing Facility, with the hospital and our colleagues uh, um, uh, just down the road, uh, at the VA center. Um, I don't recall what the next slide is, so we can go to that and we'll see who's leading that one. Um, uh, Dr. Wilkie, do you want to take this one? Or... This is Dr. Kamdar, correct? Oh, sorry, Dr. Kamdar. Yes, please. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Manali Kamdar. Um, I am a lymphoma specialist. As you all know, lymphoma is a kind of blood cancer. Um, I'm part of the blood cancer division at the University of Colorado. And I have been uh, really fortunate to be working with some excellent talent on campus. Um, what I really do at this point in time is I have really specialized a ton in immunotherapy over the last three years. That's thanks to multiple clinical trials, the talent on campus, and of course, a lot of philanthropy from people like you. Um, probably one of the most novel therapies that has made breakthrough through blood cancers is something called CAR T cell therapy. As Dr. Wilkie so fabulously alluded to, that each one of us is exposed to cancer antigen every day. But just some of us get cancer. And that really happens because our fighting cells sometimes are not able to recognize the proteins on cancer cells. As a result, cancer grows. Now, blood cancers is actually one of the most common cancers. For example, lymphoma is the fifth most common cancer. About 75,000 patients in the United States are diagnosed with lymphomas every day. Although we have made substantial progress, I do have to say that sometimes about 50 to 60% of patients may not respond to upfront therapy. And this is where immunotherapy approaches like CAR T cell really come of extreme value. So what is CAR T cell? We basically get blood from our patient who has relapsed with blood cancer. We isolate the T cells in a lab and with specialized genetically engineered tools, we make them phyto cells, phyto cells called CAR T cells. Basically think of it as a T cell with an antenna, where now it is able to recognize the bad cell, which is the cancer cell. 
Once we get this done, it takes about three weeks. And then subs subsequently, patients are reinfused with this CAR T cell product. The job of this T cell, which is now a revved up armored fighter cell, is to go after the lymphoma cells or the blood cancer cells and spare the normal cells. So this is quite unlike what we know of what chemo does. For example, chemo kills the good cells sometimes, which are fast growing. and also the bad cells, thus cancer cells die, but patients end up having a ton of side effects. On the other hand, immunotherapy, really the focus is to target the bad cells. And we have made substantial progress. In fact, I do have to say that within the division of um, hematology here, we participated in some of the key breakthrough trials involving immunotherapy, which has changed standard of care. So our patients who came to see us here because of clinical trials, because of philanthropy because of the ton of research that is happening, were able to get agents that other patients unfortunately couldn't get it until the drug became FDA approved. And of course, you heard about all the novel experiments that are happening on campus, especially with the GMP facility, making better CAR T cells. Um, and I'm just so blessed to be at the helm of all of this, to be able to offer this to patients. So that's really CAR T cell in a nutshell. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, in terms of the future of blood cancer, I do have to say that not everything is going to have to be tackled with immune therapy approaches. Sometimes we have to also talk about certain switches that are upregulated or revved up in certain cancers. For example, I remember there is one of the most common types of leukemia called chronic leukemia. And all I had in my toolkit about seven years ago was chemotherapy. Patients used to feel awful, chemo wasn't working for a while. And I can tell you in 2021, I have not given chemotherapy for that subtype of lymphoma in a while. So all we do is we treat our patients with pills, which are basically targeted agents that hit on certain switches that are upregulated or so-called revved up in this type of blood cancer. Similarly, my colleague, Dr. Paulier, in the world of acute leukemia, which used to historically have a really bad prognosis, at this time has a combination of a low-dose chemotherapy and a pill, and he's had multiple patients in remission. I think the challenge moving forward is really to investigate all of these amazing tools. I think chemo does still remain a part of therapy, but to hopefully end up making sure that the efficacy of these drugs increases, but the toxicity isn't increased at the cost of it. Um, and going by Dr. Wilkie's example of how she treated her patient who is doing so fabulously well, we can also talk about several patients who are currently living their life. Um, so I think the future of blood cancer is extremely promising. Um, and I think it spills over to multiple other cancers as well. So moving on to the next slide. I'm going to hand this over to uh, the director of our division of hematology, Dr. Clay Smith. He will take this forward. Hi, everybody. I'm Clay Smith. I, as Manali said, I direct the blood cancer program, and then uh, I work on using, trying to use new computer tools to try to really understand how we can get the right treatment to the right person at the right time. We, we live in an incredible time in 2021 where we have these unbelievable technologies to give us information about DNA, RNA, proteins, everything you could want to know about cancer and about the patient. And we now have all these amazing computer-based tools that will help us sort through those mountains of information to try to get exactly the right treatment that's going to hopefully be the most effective and the least toxic for, for people. Uh, really want to, want to thank all of you for your interest in philanthropy. As you heard from Dr. Flagg earlier, uh, the way our system works is that it, it's a bit of a, a catch-22. We usually can't apply for a grant until we have a lot of data, and you can't get data unless you have a grant. And the way we, we cut through that dilemma is from philanthropy, where we're able to do new experiments, explore new and different ideas, gather data, which then lets us leverage that initial support with, with larger amounts of support to drive that program forward. The, the other thing that philanthropy allows us to do is to just ask a lot of different questions. We can ask, as you see here, why did a treatment not work? Uh, most drug companies are only interested in, in treatments that work. 
we want to try to find out why didn't that work and how can we get another another treatment uh, that will work better for that person. We we also are able to use philanthropy to look at rare diseases. So many of the more common diseases uh, you've all heard about uh, have foundations and, and societies directed to them. But many times the cancers have uh, really complicated names. There are very few people with them and they get lost in the cracks a little bit. And so your philanthropy allows us to, to fill those gaps and do the same kind of amazing work that we would like to do for everybody. And then lastly, as you heard from the Dean and others, what we really want to do in this day and age is, is uh, yes, we want to keep moving forward relentlessly, step by step, but we also want to swing for home runs and see if we can't completely transform medicine by a totally new and different way of, of diagnosing and treating people. Those, again, are not projects that are, that are funded by uh, government-funded grants. They usually are looking for more uh, conservative, incremental type of approaches. So philanthropy is where we, we go for the stars. That's where we take our moonshots, where we hope to change the world and make, and make life better for all of us. So uh, on behalf of the blood cancer program, and, and I believe for all the doctors here tonight, just want to give all of you a huge thanks for being here, for everything you've contributed, for all the work you do. It absolutely changes lives. It changes medicine and, and truly changes the world. So thank you very, very much. I believe that's it for us, but we are happy to answer questions. <laughs>